Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, I spent last night searching through my old Words from Jesus journal, looking for that message that I got on Christmas. This is a little follow-up to what I said in, I believe it was my last video, about why I still celebrate to some degree the birth, not the birth of Jesus so much, as the remembrance of him coming into the earth. Now, yes, the Roman Catholic Church, actually Constantine, who started the Roman Catholic Church, he's the one that took, um, I guess it must have been Hanukkah, and joined it with their pagan celebrations. And made Christmas. Okay. So we. By habit I call it Christmas. But. I understand. Where a lot of people are coming from. When they say they don't celebrate Christmas. Because it's pagan. It's not entirely pagan. It has. It, it's half and half. Okay. It was a combination. So that Constantine could please the pagans. And the Christians, because he wanted to make this a state religion, which he did. He made a decree. I'm not sure it was a decree of Nicene, or if that was that came later. But anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, this is what the Lord said when he walked on the earth, which was 300 years before. All right? Now... The, the scripture I'm going to read, I mean, says that. I've got a scripture to read, and I want to read this little portion of a, uh, a message that I got on uh, I put Sunday or Saturday a.m. It would have been Sunday because it was 2.45 in the morning. Well, I put 12.14 or 15. Maybe I wrote it and then I went back and dated it. So anyway, it was December the 14th or 15th, 2014. He says, I am the Lord thy God. There is no other. Listen to me. Write these things. You are my daughter, my bride, and I love you. I do. See, I had prayed specifically about can I give my presence to my children? Because he had given a message to a guy named Timothy, whose channel I had quit listening to because everything was so negative. There was never any positive upliftingness about it. And I began to think maybe he was hearing from a spirit that was trying to just bring us all down. I didn't know for sure. So I was praying to the Lord. Lord, I've got all these presents for my kids. Can I not give them these presents? Because this guy said the Lord told him don't give your children your presents until after January 1st. Okay. So anyway, I began to doubt that he was hearing from the Lord. This is what, what I got. I do loathe the paganism of Christmas. He didn't say he loathed us celebrating Christmas. And I told you in my video of yesterday or whenever it was, the pagan things, the orgies, all the sex, all the drinking, overspending, taking time away from him to do the things you got to do to look, make things look so perfect. Don't ever ignore Lord, the Lord for anything. I, I don't care what it is child's graduation, your child's birthday. We celebrate birthdays for ourselves, don't we? Anyway, moving on. I do loathe the paganism of Christmas. 
It is not my birthday. The Catholic Church made it so. You may give your gifts, but never again. So, I took that as I was never again to buy them a bunch of presents. If anybody gets anything else out of that, you may give your gifts, but never again. And I have gotten them a thing or two since then, and I have repented because I thought that may have meant not at all, nothing. It says, do not drink alcohol or wine. See, that's the part he hates. The drinking, the debauchery, the lasciviousness, the fornicating, the adultery that goes on at office parties or, you know, big group parties. They're not celebrating Christmas for him. All right? Keep it holy as you should every day. Give the gifts in love. And it goes on to talk about personal things that I prayed about. So I don't need to share them. I'm going to keep this in here just for now. And I want to go on to read to you a chapter of Colossians. You need to hear this if you're in doubt. All right. I was only going to read a part of it, but it's such a good chapter for these people that are so judgmental. I don't know where they're getting it. Listen to this. You are built up in Christ. For I want you, that was the title. I'm on the NASB, you know how it titles, it titles different parts. All right. Chapter 2 verse 1 Colossians For I want you to know how great a struggle I have on your behalf and for those who are at Laodicea and for all those who have not personally seen my face that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery that is Christ himself okay I'm not sure the word wealth means money here because you could say, I've got a wealth of information, right? Come on, come on. Something's hanging up my computer. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to do it over here. Let's see. Uh, no, something's messing up with my computer. Okay, wealth is G4149, and it means riches used 22 times, riches or wealth, A, abundance of external possessions, B, fullness, abundance, plenitude or C a good example i.e. that with which one is enriched so it's not necessarily money it's from the base of G 4130 which does mean wealth in parentheses as fullness close parentheses, i.e. money, possessions, or figuratively abundance, richness, 
specially valuable bestowment or riches. Okay, so it, it can mean different things than money. All right, let's go back. Okay, close out of that. All right. Where was I? Uh, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in true knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this so that no one will delude you with persuasive argument. For even though I am absent in body, nevertheless I am with you in spirit, rejoicing, to see your good discipline and stability of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Just pause for a minute here. I just thought of something. This has been weighing on my mind. Since the Hebrew people considered babies to be born when they're conceived, it makes me wonder, now don't you know that when Mary conceived Jesus, you know, I already said when in that other video, when the sperm enters the ovum, a little light goes off, a spark. And in that one movie, they showed the whole room lighting up when the Holy Spirit, that could have been the Holy Spirit coming down on Mary. But I'm just thinking, she knew exactly when this happened. And she would have told her mom, maybe her sisters, who probably told their sisters, you know, the mother. And, I mean, who knows how many people knew the day she conceived. Okay. Now, I don't know what happened to the records. I should think they would write these things down. So that, that's why when their babies were born, their babies were considered one. Because they're already more than nine, they're nine months, you know, they're one. They're not nine months old, they're one. Okay, I just wanted you to know that. It just came to my mind, I didn't want to forget. So therefore, as you have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in Him. Having been firmly rooted... And now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception. According to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. My point was, if they knew when Jesus was conceived, how do we know that they didn't celebrate that in some way? How do we know that? Someone destroyed the records or they're hidden in the Vatican. My point being, when Constantine took what they celebrated, meaning the Christians, 
And then he, he combined it with what the pagans celebrated. How do we know that they didn't have big celebrations over this day that Mary said, I was I conceived the Son of God. We don't know that. And no one is to say it didn't happen. That, that We know she knew. Why wouldn't she tell? Why wouldn't they celebrate it? They celebrated his rising from the dead every Sunday. That's why they meet on Sunday. That's in the Bible. The apostles met every Sunday in honor of his resurrection. Okay, let me move on. Just keep that in mind. For in him, that's Jesus, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete. And he is the head over all rule and authority. And in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands in the removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressors. Having canceled out the certificate of debt, consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. When did he disarm the rulers and authorities? He made a public display of them. Let me look at the footnote. It's loading. Divested himself. When he had divested himself of the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them having triumphed over them, well, through his death and resurrection. Yeah, he sure did triumph over them. All right, verse 16. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. No one is to act as your judge. Now the King James Version says holy day instead of festival. The Lord told me, keep it holy as you do every day. So, it's a holy day. It is a holy day. So, don't let anyone be your judge in regard to food or drink, which he told me specifically not to drink, but that could have been because that's one of the things he hates about Christmas. 
people drink and then they want another and then they want another and next thing you know they're drinking too much not me when I do have a drink like at my parents funeral I have one and then I have coffee I know how to control it and it, it relaxed me so that all the noise and commotion and them arguing over here or you know having discussion and them playing cards and oh they, you know clapping over here and kids playing over here it can contend to get to me and so one drink is good for me and the second time we had <coughs> fought my father's funeral I insisted on a glass of wine. My brother was like, are you sure you want to do that? And I said, you don't want me not to. <laughs> Let me get a drink. See, I know my body. Fibromyalgia and ME causes that kind of ultra sensitivity to noise. And someone all of a sudden yelling, Woohoo! You know, because they euchred somebody. <laughs> I love euchre. I wish I could find three people here to play it with me. I would play cards with them. Anyway, maybe the Lord hasn't allowed that for a reason. Let's move on. So we're not letting people judge us in regards to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. Those were Jewish things also. He's telling us, don't let people judge you because you don't do those things. You see? So if you don't want to do Christmas, don't. And don't let anybody judge you over it. That's the point. Whether you want to keep the Sabbath or not, <clears throat> or you want to keep the new moon as a festival. They kept the new moon as like a, a special day. We don't have to. Alright? Okay, moving on. Things which are, these things, he's saying, which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement. It's pride. Oh, I know the truth of this. And you should not do that. Or you should be doing this. It's pride. They say it. I've had people tell me about, Oh, you just want to keep on celebrating Christmas. Uh, for whatever reason they gave. And they say it in such a snotty way. I mean, sorry to use that word. Not everybody. Not everybody, but some. You could tell by the tone of, and use of words. You can tell. Okay, let me move on. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of the angels, taking his... And notice that said, and the worship of the angels which we're not supposed to do, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. People get visions and dreams can tend to be very prideful. And not holding fast to the head from whom the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments, grows with a growth which is from God. If you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees or laws such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, 
which all refer to things destined to perish with use in accordance with the commandments and teachings of men. He's saying, why do you allow this? Why do you allow this to bother you and cause you a problem? Why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to these laws or decrees? It's Colossians chapter 2. You might want to study it. The last verse says, These are matters which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion and self-abasement, which is raising yourself up, that's pride, and severe treatment of the body, but are no value against fleshly indulgence. They are of no value against fleshly indulgence. Now that can be a little confusing. We are not supposed to indulge, well, indulge could mean to take part in. You indulge, but not overindulge. I guess what I'm thinking is overindulgence of like any kind of food or drink or activity. You can overindulge. So, these are matters which have to be sure the appearance of wisdom and self-made religion and self-abasement and severe treatment of the body but are of no value against fleshly indulgence. And I'll leave it go with that. I pray that I spoke the words of the Lord as he would have me to say them. I thank him for helping me to find that word he gave me about Christmas. And I hope that it puts it to rest to those of you who choose to celebrate, but you're feeling a little guilty now because of some things you've seen. You study Colossians 2 and pray about it. Take it to the Lord. And I hope this video has helped and you understand your rights as a believer. We don't follow the laws of the Old Testament and we don't follow the laws of men. Like all these churches and all their denominations, I mean, all the denominations and all their different laws. They all have different laws. One says you can't wear pants, you gotta wear skirts. No makeup, don't cut your hair. That's one denomination. Another one will tell you something else. They don't care how their women dress. But, uh, they teach them once saved, always saved and that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are no more. To the point of somebody telling one of you that praying in tongues is of the devil. You see? You see where man-made laws can get you? Can get you caught into blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Don't follow man-made laws. You follow the laws Jesus gave you. What are they? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And yes, you should read the New Testament at least and know how Jesus 
And Paul expounded on those things, explaining exactly what does it mean to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. How do we do that? How do we show that? How do we prove that? That's what the rest of the New Testament is for. It'll explain to you how to love your neighbor as yourself. The things you do. The things you don't do. Because some people might think, I don't know if that's right or wrong. You should, but you may not. It's in the Word of God. If it's not in the Word of God, and someone else is telling you, such and such, this is a law. You can say, find me the scripture. All right? I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you, all our devices, your internet connections, so we can stay connected until we are out of here. Which I pray is very, very soon. I'll see you soon, brothers and sisters. Let us all be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come upon the earth. And so we can stand before the Son of Man. Alright, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.